Welcome to Weld School. This is a short video on basic lines for blueprint reading. Okay, so uh, when we start to look at these lines, we need to understand what they all mean and how they affect the way that we read a blueprint. So each line has a separate meaning and all lines will determine basically two things. It's gonna determine the shape of an object Okay, and the dimensioning. So we need to know the sizes of an actual part. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cover an object line first. That's the most common, the most important. We need to know the shape of the part. So if I can see, if I'm looking straight down at this component, we're looking at 2D, not 3D. I can see this edge. I can see this edge and I can see an edge right here. So Anytime we can see those edges, that is considered an object line. So I'm gonna start right up here at the top and I'm gonna to try to draw this a little bit thick. Object lines are thick, solid lines and it shows the visible part. With that being said, that must mean that not everything's visible. So going back to this little example here, I can see that there's this bar and it looks like it shoots under, which it clearly does. But from this view, we can't see it. From this view, we can. So this would be an object line here all the way across. But on this view, we have object line till we get to the part. And then we have a hidden line here, which we know is there. It's just we can't see it directly. Okay, so object lines are a consistently dashed line, a little bit less weight than your object line, so it's a little bit thinner, but you know, your AutoCAD programs will uh, clearly uh, differentiate the weights. So when you're drawing, you know, if you were drafting, which is old school, uh, it, you know, you'd actually have to maybe use different weights of pencils or pens or whatever you're drawing with. All right, next one is a center line. A center line, I put here center of this circle going across or center of it going here. We could say that maybe we centered, uh, you know, one piece on another piece. It doesn't really matter. You're finding the center of that piece or hole or, I don't know, any other component that might be on there. Okay, so with a center line, it's a fine broken line made up of a series of short and long dashes. So I'm going to try to write, draw it a little bit lighter. Uh, weight. So we got short, long, short, long, short, long, so on and so forth. And those are center lines. Okay. Next thing. We have this part. We see object lines. We see hidden lines, center lines. But What's the size of it? So we need to know the size. So we want to say that, you know, this one's a, what is it? Five, it's four Y, this one's two by six, whatever. Uh, or maybe even the cut out of that hole, we need to know what that is. That one is specifically one inch. So we have two different lines that help us with dimensions. And we have our extension lines. And then we have our dimension line. Okay, so whatever X equals in inches or millimeters, whatever the units are. So we have extension and dimension. Uh, so if I was drawing this thing, I would pull those extension lines off of all these edges so that way I can give dimensions, okay? Next thing are leaders. Leaders usually come off on an angle, some type of an angle. And we basically have two leaders, one with an arrow and one with a dot. So if it's on a surface, that could be, we use a dot and that's telling us, hey, it's painted, it is ground, it is steel, it's aluminum, it's stainless. But an arrow points to another line. The next thing that we see is a cutting plane line. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and do my arrow up. I'm gonna come down, and there's been a couple of these that have been used. So we're gonna go with the preferred, which basically 
uh, is, you know, this line coming across, short, short, long, short, short, into your arrow. Okay, and that would be, okay, we want to go ahead and cut right through here and out, and then we would see what that component looks like cut in half. We never truly cut the part in half, but it just gives us some more detail by cutting it open. Anytime that we cut something open, then we see what we call uh, section lines. So I'm going to abbreviate. And actually, let me put this up here. Cutting plain oh, line. Okay. So section lines are, hey, we cut this in half. And noting that it was cut in half, we can use uh, section lines, which can denote different materials. Don't always count on the section cross hatching to match. Sometimes they just pick something. I've noticed that, um, but I'll explain a couple of these here in a second. So these are like double dash space, double dash space. This is just single dash. Uh, we might see something like uh, solid line dash dash, solid line dash dash dash, so on and so forth. Okay. Maybe something that's more of a cross hatch pattern. Sorry if this is a little bit sloppy. I'm trying to keep these videos short. And. There is one that looks like this, but it has gaps in it. Probably a little bit more difficult to draw. Let me see if I can even do this. Uh, maybe I'll make these solid. And then these are kind of dashed going through. It doesn't really matter. So there are different uh, section lines, okay? This one is supposed to denote steel. This one's like cast iron, uh, malleable iron, or general use for all materials so maybe we would want to know that one maybe our AutoCAD defaults to that one if we're using like a SolidWorks or um, AutoCAD Pro Engineer I guess the list really goes on and on this would be like magnesium and aluminum this is a uh, copper brass bronze this one in the middle here we're pointing to this is the uh, lines used for zinc, lead, different alloys, things like used quite often. All right. Let's continue on. Um, a chain line is something that's long, short, long. Okay. And a chain line can be used to uh, indicate the location or extent of a surface. Okay. Uh, short break and long break, absolutely important. This is a short break. So maybe we were, uh, maybe this component was like, I don't know, eight feet long and nothing changed in between. Uh, so we wanted to put a break line in there, whether it be short or long break, uh, we could pull information out. As we get through this semester, we'll see more and more break lines and how they're utilized. So I'm not going to get into too crazy. That's the symbol for short. This one with like a heartbeat thing is a long break. And then the last thing is this phantom line. And we use phantom lines maybe to uh, indicate different positions of a part. Um, so maybe, you know, we got this and then this part can swivel. So we draw maybe at a different color with phantom lines that it can swivel up here and use it to show the ex uh, existing components and how these two would fit together. So maybe this thing, you know, got locked into another component. And so this component is drawn all in uh, phantom lines and then we can fit our new component that we're making that uses object line hidden lines and it just shows that it's like a mating part okay so that's a phantom line and that really kind of 
sums up all your basic lines. So again, object line, use the C, uh, use for uh, lines that we can see, um, hidden, things that we can't see but are there. Center lines, obviously, the name tells you what it is. Extension and dimension, so those are for numbers, sizes, locations, of holes, welds, anything. Leaders give us more information. These are great to have. Cutting plane lines, if we're going to imagine something to be cut open. When they're cut open and there's a surface there, we can depict that surface with our section lines. Chain line to uh, show the extent of a surface. Short or long breaks to cut material out that doesn't change uh, to make the print a little bit um, more detailed. So we have something long, we shrink it up because of cutting lines. I'm sorry, because of break lines. And now we can you know, blow up that image and, and make it easier to read. And then phantom lines, again, for mating parts or um, alternate positions of a part that we're making. And these are all used for your orthographic uh, projections, whether it be front, top, back, left side, right side, um, so on and so forth. Okay, uh, that wraps up our basic lines for Weld School. Thanks for joining us.